What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. Today we're at the lake for another Catch 15 challenge. And by the way, there's a giant pile of Christmas trees behind me here. Hopefully those get in the lake so we can catch some fish on them this year. I have to double check that the plug is in because I made a mistake this morning and forgot to charge my trolling motor batteries. And I don't want any more mistakes to cost me time. I only have three hours left to fish because I had to wait for the batteries to charge. So today for this Catch 15 challenge, my goal is to catch 15 pounds of fish in only three hours. To make this challenge happen, I have to avoid unproductive water at all costs. To do this, I'm going to be using my side and down imaging to find bait fish and fish first. And hopefully that only takes me about an hour so I can start casting and putting some fish in the boat. Big one. There we go. Oh, one of these brush piles here. Football jig, fish the moment offshore jig right here. Big one. Man, these fish set up in these brush piles this time of year. I know it's like pretty well, so catching 15 pounds in three hours is definitely doable just with my experience out here. And if I can get fish like this size in the boat, it's not gonna be a problem. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at that giant right there. Fish the moment, offshore jig, peanut butter and jelly color, 5 8 ounce football jig, guys. When they get in brush piles in the winter, in the spring, in the summer, it doesn't matter. That fish the moment offshore jig with a jewel Versacraw on it is an absolute fish catching machine. That is a beautiful fish right there. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Woo! There we go guys, four pounds, six ounces, almost a four and a half pounder. That is an absolutely beautiful fish on a football jig. That's actually my first fish of 2022. Not a bad way to start the year, catching them offshore with my favorite football jig. It's a four and a half pounder. That's the way to start it. Oh, there we go guys. Got that fish out of one of those brush piles I grabbed in the first 30 minutes of the day. Again, I caught that fish on a 5 8 ounce fish the moment offshore jig by Jewel Bait Company. I designed this jig to be the best brush pile jig on the market with that double cable weed guard. And it came through that brush perfectly to put that big fish in the boat. I'm throwing a Green Pumpkin Versacraw Jr. Also the craw I designed for this jig. And I'm pairing that on a Denali Covert 7 foot 2 heavy action worm and jig rod. This rod is super sensitive and I need needed this rod to be sensitive because the brush pile I'm fishing is really far away from me. You can actually see it here guys on my 360 imaging. It's one of these brush piles out here at the very end of these dots and it's about 110, 120 feet away from the boat. It seems like the further away I can be away from these brush piles the better. My live scope range actually is set to 80 feet so it's not even uh, scanning these brush piles but I'm just using my waypoints instead and all I'm doing is just trying to bomb that football jig out as far away from the boat as I can, get it 100 to 120 feet away from the boat, and that fish bit at the end of that very long cast. I'm also using some 14 pound Sunline fluorocarbon to make sure I can get some better casting distance and better feel on this jig with that fluorocarbon line and that little bit thinner diameter line. It's a little bit sketchy around that brush with 14 pound tests, but I've never had any problems with it. And I just try to get that jig as far away from the boat as I can so I can sneak, sneak up on these fish and not have all these pings from the sun and are messing with them. Got Got the big one. Different brush pile, the same pattern. Graphed this brush pile, saw some fish in it as well. Two brush piles in a row right here, the football jig. Get up your fish, there we go. Nice one right there, a little keeper. Nothing crazy, but just a nice little fish. Let's get this guy weighed. Then we'll see if we can get a few more in the boat. One pound, 14 ounces, there we go. Not a big one, but just a keeper. And right now, that's all we really need. Just some keeper fish. Lock that weight in really fast. We have six pounds right now. And hopefully, if we can keep this pattern rolling, we can keep catching them because that football jig is working. Same exact bait. And 
I'm making it look a little bit easy right now, guys, because I'm just cutting out all of the in-between time. I'm just going fish catch, fish catch, fish catch. But even though I know this lake really well, and I fished here before, and I know where a lot of these brush piles are, I'm not just going and fishing every brush pile I know and just fishing history. Instead, I'm actually spending time to graph every single brush pile to see which fish have fish in them. This is really important, especially when you only have three or four hours to fish, because if I fish a brush pile with no fish in it for 15 or 20 minutes, there goes you know a good chunk of my day already. So I need to make sure that the brush piles I'm fishing have fish in them. And the best way to do that is graph them beforehand, find those fish in the brush pile, and then make a cast on them. go nice one found some fish here on the end of a road bed i had to change it up guys because i ran out of brush piles to fish i only have like maybe 10 marked out here and three of them had fish in them i lost a fish actually and then i kind of just ran out of stuff to do so there's an old road bed that runs out here and i graphed it and saw some nice fish on it i'll show you on down skin what they look like and again just throwing the fish on an offshore jig changed it up to a different color because i didn't miss that last fish and that fish definitely ate it a lot better just went to a watermelon candy color so let's see this guy weighed not exactly the size we need but we still have like an hour and 20 minutes left in the day and i saw several fish down in the spot so maybe we can pull a few more keepers here and there was really one really big arch down there too so maybe we can get a solid one one pound 15 ounces so got a four pounder in the boat and then some one pound 15 ouncer and a one pound 14 ouncer nothing crazy but we do have eight pounds for three fish not too bad they're almost two pounder so we'll get this guy back down there now i'm gonna keep lining up on that road bed i have it marked out here my 360 imaging and all i'm really doing guys with this football jig especially in the winter time our temperatures are 44 degrees 45 degrees is i'm casting that thing out there letting it sink all the way to the bottom on a slack line my line has a lot of wiggle room in it to let that jig fall straight down the bottom and then once it hits the bottom or i count to like let's say 10 or 15 seconds i'm gonna start slowly dragging that bait sideways with my rod and then I'm going to reel up the slack and let that bait sit for a second and then continue to drag it. The key is I want to maintain bottom contact the entire cast with that football jig. I'm trying to just drag it slow across that bottom, keep it in contact with the bottom, and then every once in a while, if I can get around a spot that has a fish on it, like that brush pile earlier or this road bed here, I can usually get those fish to pick it up and eat it. And after that, you just reel down and set the hook. Now, unlike my normal catch 15 challenges where my main struggle is figuring out how to catch fish, I actually know this lake pretty well and I have a pretty good grasp of what they're doing this time of year. The biggest problem is the amount of time I have to fish. An hour and a half is not very long and I only have right now about, oh, there's one, got it. I'll finish that thought in a second. I need to keep catching them while they're biting. I said it was a challenge, but this spot may have a few more fish on it than I thought. Get up here, fish. There we go, another keeper. I'll finish that thought here in a second. <laughs> Need to land this fish. Another little one. Nothing crazy. Those fish, ah, uh, the brush piles are going to be better, guys, than these fish off these road beds or these schools of fish in general. But I can at least put five in the boat here and then maybe try to go head hunting for one more big one. Maybe try to find another brush pile. Not a big one, one pound, eight ounces. But again, another keeper. That puts four in the box with about an hour and 15 minutes left to fish. Nine pounds, 11 ounces for four fish. Get that guy back down the lake. Oh, sorry for all the sniffles, guys. Again, getting over a cold. But as I was trying to say, my biggest challenge is not figuring out these fish, figuring out how to get them to bite, the bait, even the areas that much. I know they're gonna be offshore around some brush and maybe this road bed. The problem is that it takes a while for me to find these productive offshore spots. And in an eight hour catch 15 challenge, normally I'll spend 
four or five hours graphing offshore structure, graphing areas that I think are gonna be holding fish. However, in today's challenge, I only have a very limited time to both graph and catch the fish. So what I started my day doing is just going to brush piles I knew about, graphing the ones that I thought had fish, and when I saw the fish down there in the brush with my electronics, I could pull up and get bit on my first or second cast. However, there are only three brush piles I found that actually had fish in them. And after that, I was pretty much out of brush to look at. So I had to call an audible and go check out this roadbed. I knew this road bed was here, which definitely helped out, but, oh, what is that? Oh, just a rock. Knew that road bed was here. Sorry, guys, trying to, oh, there, there he is. Oh, that's a better one. That's a lot better one. Get up here, fish. Oh, he wasn't that much better. He must have been hooked on a log or something. There we go. I cannot get my thoughts out, guys, because I'm catching him every cast. That's two casts in a row. Another one right there, I'll get him on the board. Oh man, I'm over here complaining and I'm catching them. But what I was trying, I'm trying to explain the difficulty of catching fish and these fish are not helping my case because I just keep freaking catching them. Let's hit this guy, wait. One pound, nine ounces, nothing crazy there. Uh, let's see here, that puts our total to 11 pounds four ounces, 11 pounds, four ounces. They're a little pound and a half for nothing crazy right now, but basically, I don't know why I'm trying to explain why I'm not catching when I am catching them. Maybe I should just, uh, or maybe I should keep talking about it because it's apparently working. Me talking about not catching fish is helping me put fish in the boat. And I do have that cable guard here, as you guys can see on this jig, and it got bent up. So if you do use this fish moment offshore jig, make sure you bend that cable guard back into place after a few fish catches, and you'll be good to go. Back to topic of me complaining about not catching fish and then catching them. Basically, with only three hours in the day, I have to be very efficient with my time, graphing these offshore spots, pulling up, and only casting when I know the fish are there. I've been pretty good at it today. Fished three brush piles, missed a fish and caught two, pulled up on this road bed right away, found some fish and caught them. And because this lake is so small and because I know it so well, I can get on fish a lot faster. When I'm on Grand Lake or Beaver Lake, I'm less familiar with those lakes and they're also way bigger, so it takes a lot longer to find those fish. But if you're on a small lake like this that's you know not that large, normally it's pretty easy to locate the fish. And if you can use your electronics to narrow down those key spots that have fish, you can put them in the boat a lot faster than you can on those bigger lakes. It just takes that discipline to not go out there and uh, you know fish and fish and fish. You have to sit down in your seat and drive that trolling motor around or drive that big engine around to find those spots. There's one. Might as well just keep this rolling. And when I'm graphing, guys, I mean, I graph for a solid, there we go. I don't know if that's gonna help. They're all cookie cutter, the same size, which is not good. But I'll just keep talking while I'm weighing these fish and showing them to you. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I'm graphing, guys, I'm trying to just cover as much water as quickly as I can and only find those spots where I feel like the fish are catchable and where I know they're bass. And I made videos explaining how to do this, how to both identify the fish on the fish finder and know if they're catchable. So I'll leave some videos linked up here. One pound, nine ounces, it just calls me one ounce, but one ounce might be important here. We don't know. So we'll do that now, 11 pounds, five ounces. Nice little fish. And it's nice to be able to catch them every cast while we're talking here, that's three in a row. But uh, yeah, basically finding those spots that you feel like the fish are set up on or they're catchable is really important in these limited time formats because I need to be able to find those fish I mean, right after another and catch them like I'm doing here. I got fortunate in the fact that I pulled up on the school here that has multiple fish going. I saw four or five fish on the screen. I didn't think there was gonna be this many here, but you know, it seems that this bot's kind of loaded. They're just all a little bit too small. Let's see if there's a bigger one down there. Well guys, my time is up. 
three hours are in the books and I wasn't able to complete the Catch 15 challenge, unfortunately. I spent the last hour of my day fishing on that road bed. I caught a few more short fish that didn't help me. And then I went and refished a couple of those brush piles that I caught fish out of earlier to see if I could get another bite. That didn't happen. And then the wind started coming in, the cloud cover came in. So I tried to throw a jerk bait around the shallow, caught a couple small fish, but again, nothing to help me out. So my final total was five fish for 11 pounds, five ounces. I feel like if I had five more hours of fish, I could definitely put 15 pounds in the boat. I could just idle around, find more brush piles, or maybe find another chunk of that road bed that has a school of fish on it. But with the limited time that I have today, I wasn't able to complete the challenge. And I don't feel too bad because I was able to put five fish in the boat, which is always something I'm trying to do. And getting five fish in the boat in three hours in the lake I haven't been to in like six months is definitely not anything to complain about. And I was complaining a lot during that flurry of fish catches it seemed to help maybe i need to complain more and i put more fish in the boat but hopefully you guys learned something about how to throw a football jig offshore and also how to optimize or maximize your time in these short windows using electronics to put more fish in the boat if you want to check out more catch 15 challenges you can actually click in the title of the video, the little hashtag catch 15, you'll find all of those videos in my playlist there and you can check them all out. And also subscribe to the Fish Moment YouTube channel if you want to see more of these catch 15 challenges in the future. Thanks again for checking out this video. We'll see you all in the next one.